Before I start, uh, I would like to uh, point out that this presentation was prepared for beginner audience in mind. So if you guys have been doing Docker, running it production for a while, it's probably not for you. <laughs> so please feel free, leave me any time, I will not take it personally. If you always wanted to try, run doc, Logstash, sorry, I said Docker, Logstash and uh, give this a try but didn't know how, uh, you are in the right room. Okay. Let me introduce myself. My name is Margie. I'm a, a systems engineer working for a small Drupal company in Australia, uh, based in Sydney, called Morphed. Uh, it's small, but we were lucky enough to have a few enterprise uh, customers from the publishing industry, pharma industry, and local and government, uh, Australian government. So that gives us good opportunity to do a lot of DevOps at big projects, which is really good fun. I have been fan of DevOps, following DevOps for the last five, six uh, years, I would say. And I think I became a sysadmin in 1999 when my colleague at a web development company left us and I was suddenly the only responsible for the production web server running actually web pages of a political party which was in the government at the time. So that was really good start of my sysadmin career, <clears throat> but it was fun. Okay, okay. So, to give you, get you an idea, I used to work for a couple of ISPs in Australia as well. If you are wondering, is this Australian accent? It is not. Of course not. I'm originally from the Czech Republic. I have lived in Australia for 12 years. Uh, so I worked for a few big ISPs in Australia, and you get a ticket which says, customer says, they get randomly redirected while browsing their website. There is no more information, so what, what can I do, right? So this is way back, so what, what do you do? You log into the web server <laughs> and start grabbing logs, right? So this is an Apache, so you see like grabbing for 30x in Apache log, then trying to filter out the lines which I don't wanna see, so I'll get rid of Googlebot, and you know, this is a mess, right? This is how it used to be. It can be even worse if you happen to have more than one web server, like behind a load balancer, you might need to jump on all of them and do that on, on each of them or maybe download the logs uh, on your machine and do it there. I actually do remember uh, working for a big telco in Australia that we had a colleague of mine wrote a little robot which was periodically R-syncing Apache logs or Tomcat logs from 24 production web heads <laughs> to like a big thumper, sun thumper storage box just to be able to have it locally and, and parse it. You know, like that, that was desperate, but uh, that's how people used to do it. So what if there was a new way? What if you just go to a console and type in, hey, give me log type Apache and it belongs to this site and the server response was between 301 and 304. Well, there is such a thing. It's called Kibana. And you can see that here is the query line. And after hitting enter there, you get 12 hits back over the last 15 minutes. If you can see it in the right top corner, uh, which basically are exactly what they are looking for. And you can start going into, uh, and you can see these fields on the left, which are extracted from the lines. Then you can go and create a visualization, a little chart with all the uh, response codes over the time on maybe even better, like a data histogram which shows you more what was happening and what, what codes you are getting. So, what is it we have just seen? So this was Kibana, and I will explain what Kibana is. And we just, as you could see, we just executed one query and created two visualization to help us uh, look at the data. But what's under the hood and where's the log stash I'm supposed to talk about? Well, ta-da! Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the ELK stack. ELK stands for Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. These are three open source projects maintained by a company called Elastic, uh, which has headquarters in <coughs> Amsterdam. <coughs> and I, I go regularly to their meetups because this is really, you know, everybody, like many companies these days use Elasticsearch uh, for storing documents, searching. Uh, so I go to their meetups. So a little bit of a interesting development on the ELK name. So 
I think early this year they realized it's not elk anymore. Maybe, you know, like they're, it's like a bee and elk together. You can see that they tried. That's because there is a new component uh, which uh, came to the stack. It's called beets. So we can call it belk. It's probably the accurate name for today. And also I think the Elastic announced that at least since the new version, like there is a version five of all these four components coming within a month or two, they will call it Elastic Stack. So that's actually the, the name, the next marketing name of the Elk Stack. So Elastic Stack is the old Elk Stack. And this, these are, are they're like a new logos of the project, uh, pro, pro, products. So what's, what's the goal of the stack? It's basically designed to take data from any source in any format, process it, transform it and enrich it, and then store it so you can search, analyze and visualize it in real time. So that's what the stack is supposed to provide you. As I said, well, we can look at it as like, it has four components at the moment, so I will just walk you through this briefly. Elasticsearch is where the data is stored in the Elk stack. It's actually a full text search analytic engine. Uh, you might be similar with Apache Solar. They actually share the same code base. Both of them were forked from Apache Lucene. But this one has like a high availability, high availability like built in and a horizontal scalability as well. You know, you have a cluster of several Elasticsearch uh, nodes, you're running out of space, so you just add another Elasticsearch node, it automatically joins the cluster, rebalances the data, you know, tries to basically rebalance itself. So it's, it's designed for high availability and scalability. The next tool is Logstash. That's the tool which collects, process, and forwards events, and basically for data collection, enrichment, and transformation. It has many input, outputs, and plugins. And this actually shows you a little bit more. This is the old um, Logstash logo uh, before the new one was introduced, which kind of, you can see here what's happening. You have a lot of data sources coming inside Logstash. You can even pull, it doesn't have to be pushed. And then you process it somehow, and then you can output it to different endpoints, whatever you need to. Uh, just to say a little bit with Logstash. So as I said, there are input plugins, output plugins, and filter plugins. So for inputs, just a few, like it can be file, like a log file you can read from the disk. It can be a socket, a TCP, UDP, or web socket. You can read from syslog. You can read from message queue, from Microsoft Windows event log, also from Drupal DB log. As I said, you don't have to only, you know, like receive something you can actually pull. So if I was reading from Drupal DB log, I would be pulling from from MySQL database. And the beats, I put the beats on the first, that's the new thing, as you will learn in a minute. There are also dozens of output plugins, so after you process the data in Logstash, you can store it somewhere else in a file again. Maybe you just pre-processed it, changed the structure, you can send it somewhere else via TCP, UDP, WebSocket, store it in syslog, put it in a message queue, send it to your metrics storage system or, you know, create a ticket in Jira, Redmine, you know, create a Twitter tweet, uh, store it in S3 all, or store it in Elasticsearch. That's what Elast the Elk stack does. And there are a few filters Logstash uses for manipulating and enriching the data, which we will cover later as well. Kibana, this is, that's the interface. You use your browser to run Kibana and uh, that's open source data visualization platform which allows you to interact with data through powerful graphics. I'm reading that this is really nice. Brings data to life with visualization. I like that uh, definition, that's what Kibana is. And the last addition, that's the fourth component, that's where Elk became Belk. Elastic came up with the concept of beats which are kind of like lightweight uh, data shippers. Um, so think of it as something you can install on your server where the logs are. So maybe you have like a few Apache uh, servers, so you can just put a little um, uh, file bit there tailing the Apache log and sending it to Logstash, or you can install, uh, I think it's called top bit or packet bit, sniffing packets, sending it to Logstash. So these are like a log collectors. 
designed to be lightweight. <coughs> so that's the, and there are more and more of them uh, getting developed. To show you the flow in the bulk stack, so we said that there is elastic search when we are storing, uh, I'm going to store the data, the process logs. Kibana connects to Elasticsearch and gives you the visualization, the, you know, like to be able to query it, visualize it, analyze it. Then you have the many data sources, uh, that's the input. You somehow need to get, uh, get the logs from the data source into Elasticsearch, so that's the log stash, the log stash does that. And as you can see, I, one data source might use a bit to get the data to the log stash. Another data source maybe uses a different, different path. Maybe it's actually uh, running locally on the Logstash server. So it's, the Logstash might use just like a file input. There is no need for any transmission. And maybe, as I said, the new beats kind of support, because they are lightweight, they might do some kind of pre-processing as well. And maybe they are capable of sending the logs straight to the Elasticsearch because there is no processing need it anymore. You have done the little of processing you need on the source side, and then you can just store it straight away. No, no need to go through the whole pipeline. This is just to show you the input, output, and filter plugin, which Logstash consists of. So before I show you how to run that, I would like to uh, say a few words about Docker. I don't think I have to introduce it too much because this has been such a popular tool over last at least one, but maybe two years, uh, when like basically developers these days run Docker on their machines, uh, just to be able to run stacks very quickly. Uh, I noticed enterprises, even like old style, like telco enterprises have Docker in production these days. Uh, so it was really a breaking technology. Me as a sysadmin, I saw it these two, three years ago when it came as a lightweight virtualization platform, a way of virtualizing things. But actually that's not how the Docker um, developers sell it. They say that Docker is an open source platform for developers and sysadmins to build, ship, and run distributed applications. So they kind of look at it as a packaging system. You somehow build your application, inside you create a Docker image, then you can ship it, you store the image somewhere, and then when you need to run it, and it would be on your notebook, it might be in production, might be in staging, might be on different operating system, you just get a copy of that image, it's already built, it's a package, and you execute it. That's a beautiful way of thinking of application packaging system, which might run anywhere. This is kind of the younger definition. Docker is a tool that can package an application and its dependencies in a virtual container that can run on any Linux server. There is a dependency on Linux server, but you probably know if you run it on your laptops that you know there was boot to Docker, then was a newer version, when it kind of installs um, virtual machine, virtual box for you, so you can run it on Windows or Mac. Uh, I think Docker, was it last month, released a beta of what they call Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows, and they cut of the uh, need for um, VirtualBox by using the native uh, hypervisor. So under Mac it uses the hypervisor which is built in Mac, on Windows it uses a hypervisor which is in Windows, so there is no more, um, it still runs Linux kernel on that hypervisor but it does not use the heavy lifted like of a VirtualBox to, to provide it. So it's even closer, like, you can think of it as a native tool. So I want to just show you quickly how I run uh, hello world log stash by one line command. So I'm going to uh, docker run a log stash 2.3 image. Why 2.3? Because I know that version 5 is going to be released this month or next month. And if you don't specify the number, it, it tries to download the latest. So I'm, 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 I'm locking the number here. and. I'm configuring that it runs logstash program within the container and this input and output plugin. So input plugin will be standard input and output will be standard output using the Ruby debug codec. So let's see how that looks like. I have a little cheat file. So my hello world is here.
at starting. So it's one liner. If I say hello world, that's the standard input it's waiting for. I'm getting the same thing back, but it's structured. You can see I got like a JSON, the message is hello world, it edited a version, it edited a timestamp, it edited the host name of the server it was processed. That's actually the name of the Docker container it's running right now. So you see this is just reading standard input, processing it. So that was my hello world application. So I just ran logstash by running one command. What I need to do, I just need to have Docker on my machine. I, I just showed you how to run Hello World in, in um, Docker Logstash. So I killed that container, so I have no containers running. No containers stopped. Sorry. So there's nothing. And we can go and do the same test, but this time we also add a filter plugin. So we had standard input before and standard output, but now we are also define a filter using the Grok, Grok plugin and saying try to match the message you are getting in using the combined Apache log pattern. You can see here in the middle. So that's a pattern, it's like regex, it's defined um, and it will basically try to parse the line and, and break it based on, on, on the definition of the combined Apache lock, which is the standard. And I will pass a Apache line to the standard input and let's see what we will get. So I'll just my cheat file again. So I'm running Docker version 2.3, sorry, uh, logstash 2.3 in Docker. And I'm configuring it from a command line, providing input, plugin, filter plugin, and output plugin. Starting. And now I take this Apache line and paste it to standard input. We know it. And it used the combined Apache log uh, definition, pattern definition, and parsed this line I pasted in on input. So you can see that this get got here in the verb field. This 200 got to response field. Uh, this IP address got here into client IP. So this is how I, like Logstash parsed an Apache log line. So that was just a little play. So I will stop this Logstash. There's no Docker running. I can go back. So let's try to run this. This is um, something you can run in production. It's not high available, but you can actually do that on your little server. So as you can see, we have three components here, Elasticsearch when the data will be stored, Kibana, this is how we will look at the data, Logstash is what will process the data and we need some kind of source. So I will run three containers, Elasticsearch with this line, then I will run Kibana, linking to the Elasticsearch, and then I will run uh, Logstash uh, giving, it, giving it a configuration file in this directory I'm mounting and giving it a Apache log file which I downloaded, downloaded from a production server last night. I'll show you what it is. So let's start Elasticsearch and once again if you have Docker installed and you execute this command you are running Elasticsearch right now. This is how easy it is to use Docker. So Elasticsearch is running. You can see the it's registered here. Now I start Kibana, saying run Kibana 4.5, expose port 5601, which is standard port Kibana listens to. So instead of, I want this 5601, 5601 to be available on all my interfaces on my local machine. Link it to the Elasticsearch and name it my Kibana. So I start that. I'm running Elasticsearch and Kibana. So if this works, I should be able to go to localhost 5601. It's loading Kibana. And it's asking me to configure an index and it's telling me that there is unable to fetch mapping well, that's because Elasticsearch is empty. 
it's expected, right? So let's let's give it some data. So the last thing we need to run is the Docker log stash. And I will show you what I'm giving it. So I have a log stash directory. I'm just that I'm not cheating. You see that I have one config file and one Apache access. So this will I will pass this as a config and I will pass this in as a as a, log file. Let's just have a look at the file. So it has 34,000 lines. And you can see it's Apache log. And let's look at the config. I will cover that. But as you see, there's input file. That will be the Apache we are passing in. We will be using grog filter for combine Apache log again, and we will write this to Elasticsearch. So let's execute that. <clears throat> Starting. These who are closer to me can probably hear my fan just started spinning. That's because it's processing these uh, 30,000 lines. Should take only a few seconds. So now, when I go back, I'm running three Docker containers: Elasticsearch, Kibana, I'm looking at, and the Logstash, which just processed the log file and stored it in Elasticsearch. So if I refresh this page, I should see some data. So I'm saying, hey, I can see timestamp field. Should I use it as index? I'm like, yeah, please. So now. It analyzed the data and found this data inside the log file, like these fields inside the log file. So we can look at it. Oh, there's no data, why is that? Well, because this is last 15 minute in the right top corner, that's the default in Logstash. It actually burnt me at least twice when I thought something's broken. I was like, I just don't have any data for the last 15 minutes. This file is from the last night, so I need to go back and say, show me maybe the last 24 hours. And you see I'm getting something here. And these are, I will, these are the Apache lines, but they are a little bit enriched, as I said. So it's not, you know, like, because you can see I have GOIP, Czech Republic. I took it from a Czech server because I'm not afraid of the customer being angry at me. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a Drupal eShop I built years back, so I, I know I can do this. Uh, so it got enriched by GeoIP fields, <clears throat> but it's still the Apache log. You know, the agent, the client IP, the HTTP version request and server response. So uh, usually Kibana looks like this. Unfortunately, this resolution is very low. So if I go, you usually see this field on the left and you can kind of filter through that. So you can see if I don't see just agent. So now I'm, I'm just highlighting agent or you can see, I don't wanna see agent, I wanna see uh, client IP. So that's each line, but the highlighting you did a client IP and HTTP version, for example. So this is how we can do your data. So, but let's go and do a little bit of a uh, investigation. So we were talking about uh, response code. So let's let's create a few visualization. So let's start with the most catchy one. <laughs> so we create a new visualization from, and we tell it to use terms. Which terms? Well, let's let's use the response codes. So if I can see it here, field and use response row. So I'm looking at last 24 hours of logs, and this was my distribution of of uh, status codes. So I will save this. Call it. I like so this is pi response. Now I create a little bit graph which is more just bear with me. I need to create four to show you th three to show you something. So I'll create this vertical bar chart. It's a good one to go. Um, 
So it will be, no, sorry. Let's start again from a new search. And it will be date histogram. And split bars and add the terms and use the field response raw. The same thing, but shows us as it was. So I will save that as well. And this one is called maybe. And the last one, GOIP. That's a, always a very funny, very good topic. And it, geo coordinates, it will automatically offer me GOIP location. And you can see where I'm getting the most traffic from. So I will save that one as well. Okay, that's good. And that I want to show you something that's really cool. Now, when I have like three saved, I have saved visualization. I can create a dashboard. So I go to dashboard, and I say, okay, so I have this pi response. I have the bar response and I have the GOIP and I put them somehow. It's really difficult on this resolution, but I'm trying my best. So I will resize them to see them hopefully at the same time. And the geo. Challenging, but I will, yeah, good. So, and now I can do things like, oh, maybe I wanna look for the last seven days instead. And then when I go and zoom in, you see that all the visualization are changing at the same time. So if I, if I uh, click on 200 here, and I can reverse the 200, so I will invert it. So this is everything but 200, the five most frequently seen response codes. I can pin that. And I can start investigation, and I can maybe zoom in. As you see, I'm zooming in, it's changing all the graphs. The GOIP is changing, so I, I have like awesome correlation without, actually just playing with the data, I haven't saved anything. I'm just querying Elasticsearch via Kibana. Just like go back so I don't get lost. So let's, let's have a look at the last 24 hours. <coughs> and maybe try to, I have a few minutes left. Uh, maybe try to, so when I'm looking at the visualization here and I, I, I pin this response code not being 200, I can go to discover and I'm looking at the lines which are what I can see in the graphs. So I can, I can go and, and go a bit more but hey we were saying so what's actually interesting here it's like there is 404 a lot maybe you have a look what's what's actually causing it you know so i can log 404 and it's going mostly from one ip address like hey man like how about i i look at this i pin it as well and here I maybe want to see, you know, the client IP, but the agent. And I realized that all of these are call requests by doing this. And I can see that it's actually me <laughs> <laughs> uh, preparing for previous, I, I presented a short version of this at a, at a different meetup, at a meetup, and I was just, trying to find some, uh, create some anomalies in the log. So these four or four are caused by me, but you can see I, I just noticed just by going through graphs. So I don't wanna waste too much time here because time's flying. So that was, so what we have just seen. So we had log stash reading input lines from an Apache log, 33,000. We used the, we filter it using the combined Apache log pattern. We store it in Elasticsearch 
And then we use Kibana to basically go through the data, look at it, and trying to look. We could see if we use GeoIP as well. I could spend an hour here. I have to admit I'm not a Kibana expert. I'm interested in getting the data in, storing them, and reaching them. And then somebody else, a developer, can go and you know like uh, go crazy. I'm not that gifted in Kibana, but I'm just trying to show you how it can help you as a developer. Uh, and I used basically, as you could see, I didn't. My config file wasn't that big. I just like said, like, hey, use uh, source access log. You know, start from beginning. Why do you need to start from beginning? Because uh, Logstash just reads uh, from the point it started. So if there is an old file, it wouldn't touch it. So you actually have to force it to reread re it from the beginning because it was from yesterday. Otherwise, it would be waiting for the file to to get new lines, and only these will will get processed. Store the output in Elasticsearch. <clears throat> and the filter, like so, if type is Apache, and we sorry, and we set the type here, we, in this reading this file, we set the type is Apache, just like a my keyword type is Apache. I set up this keyword type is Apache. So if type is Apache, use this grok pattern and match it for a combine Apache log. And that was the grok plugin filter filter plugin. Also apply GeoIP on the client IP. The client IP, I get client IP from the previous grok match from the combined Apache log. Client IP is one of its field. So then I applied the GeoIP plugin. It, it gave me the, so I can then show you the map, GeoIP map. And also do something with date, like because if I did not tell Logstash what to do with the date, every single log in Logstash would have the timestamp of the time it was processed by Logstash. So if I'm importing 30,000 log lines, they would have timestamp now. So that's why I'm saying, hey, actually, there is a timestamp field with this regular pattern, honor that for the date of the event. So uh, Logstash comes with a lot of uh, patterns. Uh, we used combined Apache log. There is also like username, as you can see, letters and numbers, the positive integer, uh, syslog. So it's, and this is how combined Apache log looks like. So it's always uh, IP, uh, it's type IP host, store it as client, uh, client IP, pattern user, store it as ident, pattern uh, num number, store it as HTTP version. So it's a regular expression definition of, of the, of the, so here is actually an example of Apache log. So this first IP address will get stored in client IP if the match is successful, of course. So where are we? I described the components the Belk stack uses. I have run a local instance of the stack by running three commands. We processed and stored and analyzed, we processed, stored, and analyzed an Apache log and found an awkward 404 just by using Kibana to visualize that. And I hope that either you, each of you could do the same. You don't need to do much to start. Before I jump to the last part of the presentation, I would like to go, if you have your tablet or phone, can you please go to this address and pick your poison? It's just a little, little live demo. Let's see whether this will fail or not. I will go there as well, just to prove that's not nothing to be ashamed of. Ashamed of. Belk dot site hyphen showcase dot com just that I didn't have any better domain neutral domain to, to use. So if I go to belk site showcase dot com it's a little triple eight site I put together <coughs> runs on Aquia <coughs> in Sydney and being a sysadmin, just if you can pick one of the poison for me, which talks to you. So I will pick Ansible. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. I hope I got a few clicks. Just to mention central logging, I, I thought I was done with my presentation, then I reread my description and say, oh, there is one more paragraph I have to cover. So like I, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> so centralized logging, why do you need centralized logging? 
I, I tried to demonstrate that by the example in the beginning. It's basically to get logs to one space, so you can one place, so you can you can analyze it. You can do whatever you want. You can. It just it's convenient. I put secure in the brackets here because it has security implications. Of course, if you have all your applications and production servers pumping logs to one central place and somebody compromises that server, you know, like they have perfectly a very good view of your infrastructure and it's like a security security risk breach. So be careful if you do something like that. Think about security definitely first. <clears throat> it is not a new thing. I remember rsyslog reading like trying to configure our syslog to stream syslogs from several servers to one central syslog server at least 15 years ago. So I'm pretty sure that already 15 years ago syslog could stream remotely via TCP or UDP. UDP first, probably TCP, maybe after. The more servers you have, the more you need this. You know, like if you run cluster with, you know, like one web server and MySQL, that's probably all right to jump and, and see on the command line was happening on. But if you have it high available, uh, you, you need it. Uh, you might also need to archive that for audits. <coughs> and if you have an auto-scaling environment, say these days you, you have like a load balancer with auto-scaled auto -scaled, uh, farm of web servers to be ready for your commercial running in the TV tomorrow when a lot of customers hit your site, you automatically provision more servers. When this is gone, the peak is gone, you destroy them and the day after, there is no server to download your logs from. So <laughs> you actually have to uh, stream them to the log server if you want to have any visibility of what was happening yesterday. There are many options. Greylog has been around for a while. Elastic Stack, Elk has been popular for the last two years. Splunk is a commercial version uh, that, was, that had a lot of uh, popularity six, five years ago. I remember working for a telco company expensive but very very good and Elastic's, Elastic kind of tried to do something similar in open source way and cheaper way. There are many uh, hosted solutions like Dialog is very popular like many companies these days have one or two sysadmins they cannot you know hire somebody full time to develop them a centralized log solution. You can just open a, an account with any of these you trust. It's always like a whom do you trust? Like, do you are you comfortable with your logs being with a third party? Data log, very popular log, the new relic, you probably know it. Sumo logic, Splunk, <coughs> and Elastic Cloud offers some kind of a hosting, uh, um, hosted solution as well. <coughs> My choice is this one. You have seen it before. <laughs> I would actually, uh, this is just a little detour, but doing this, I would make it high available because here, as you can see, you are getting all your logs into one Logstash instance. What if there is a lot of processing being done, you know, like your CPU is running one at 100%, you cannot cope with the traffic, you start losing your data. So you need to kind of split it in two and need to use a message queue. So I would just use a load balancer and put at least two Logstash behind that load balancer and these logstash, I call them shippers. I think it's an official terminology. So they are shippers because they don't really process anything. They are just there to, to store the data in a message queue. Uh, if you remember that logstash picture in the beginning, like take data from one side, store it somewhere. So this is what it's doing. It's just receiving the, your logs, whatever channel you want to get it into and outputs it to message queue. Maybe it's Amazon SQS, because you don't know how to do that yourself. How do you store your logs? You know, like, so that's the beauty. But this log stash shipper is very lightweight. It's just there to, you might need like really, not beefy instance, very low CPU, just, just, just to put in the queue. And I have two, so if I'm upgrading one of these or I need to reboot it because there is a several uh, kernel patch, you know, like I I'm, I'm never have a downtown, so that's why I have two. And then, this is the rest we have seen before, but this time I have more Logstash servers, like pulling the messages, the waiting messages from the message queue, and I keep reading how long the message queue is. 
uh, I happened, it happened to me that I had like uh, two millions of unprocessed logs in a message queue <laughs> uh, because I didn't have alerted logs that's being down. So ideally you have the message queue being monitored and if it becomes too long you provision another log stash just to get, get, uh, get it processed and then you can destroy it again. And you store it again to Elasticsearch and, and you skip on it. So I just created the last thing, I'm just watching time, yeah. Uh, just created one little uh, ALK demo. This time I put it on a US host Linode. Uh, it's very similar, it runs like a few dockers, the same way we just ran them here on my local machine. Uh, but it actually gets uh, logs from a few uh, sources. It's getting uh, LAMP uh, logs from Japan-based Linode. It's getting uh, LAMP logs via beats from Germany-based Linode. That's where the little uh, eShop is hosted, bookshop. From Australia AWS instance as well, and from Australia-based Acquia subscriptions. Just like to show you the variety, you know, like I have central log slash solution just to play with, but I can get logs from all around the world and by using beats, which are designed to ship that. I'd, maybe the line is not reliable all the time, but that's the piece it's about. It just tries to deliver it. Uh, I, I wanna show you. So I will just quickly show you how Drupal watchdog logs look like in uh, Kibana. Maybe we can look at the varnish log. Then I have a little teaser how you can use server metrics. And there will be maybe something else. So let's have a quick look whether this works. This is the local instance we don't want. So this is my, so what did I say, I'll show you first. Yeah, let's look at Drupal watchdog. So I am looking for lock type, and it will be here. It's a little bit, the fields you use often usually end up here at the beginning. So I'm saying that I want a lock type, and if you see that, it's just a quick analysis. There is lock type varnish, lock type Apache, lock type, lock type Nginx, log type watchdog, and I can pin it from here. So I'm saying click, I wanna see only log type watchdog. And this is what I said, it already got filtered. So now I'm just looking at Drupal watchdog messages over the last one hour. And you can see what it looks like. Uh, so this is the message which came in and it got parsed. The Drupal action was page not found. A Drupal request URI was this one. Drupal message was this one. So this is applying like a Drupal filter <coughs> on, on Drupal watchdog messages. Then maybe we wanna see varnish, so I remove this. Second so lock type is varnish. Varnish looks very similar to Apache. Uh, I can see that this one came from Acquia. Um, Joe IP got applied on that as well. And the last one there is, let me remind myself what it was. Yeah, uh, I have a beat on one server which is called uh, Top Beat. And when you, lo uh, when you load top beat into your um, Kibana, install top beat on your server, it gives you this dashboard, which I just load in a second. Top beat dashboard. And this is metrics from uh, one of the web servers over the last 15 minutes. So I can see this time was spent on Java, MySQL, PHP, top beat itself, processes, CPU usage, average memory. Uh, you can have more servers like that. So it gives you some matrix very cheaply as well. <clears throat> so how did I get the logs inside a central uh, log, uh, alloc instance? I just used installed filebit package, 
it's RPM, it's tap. I configured it just by saying, hey, stream these paths to this log stash. That's how easy it is. Of course, I would also use TLS certificates, but this is just to, to show you how quickly it, it's possible. Install FileBeat and stream the log from these three files to the Logstash server. Also, I, I showed you some Drupal uh, logs. The production way of uh, storing logs is using the core syslog modules, uh, which basically stores the watchdog events on the local server syslog facility, which you can configure like here I did. I said, hey, uh, I created a little config file and said, store these events into varlog Drupal log. So I'm just using syslog module, write it to, and syslog writes it to a dedicated file. And then as we could see here in the previous slide, I'm just streaming this Drupal log file via the file beat. So it's a nice way how to, how to get it to log stash. Save it first to syslog, syslog saves it as a file and then, and then file beat streams it to central syslog. You can also use the Drupal DB log input plugin. And it's more for development or when you run it locally, which you actually can see how you configure the input. You have to tell it like, this is my database, this is my credentials and pull it every one minute. It has only a minute, but it doesn't do it faster. So it's like pulling every minute from straight from the database. That's another option, but not for production. <clears throat> and the uh, Acquia streams, Acquia has this nice, uh, if you guys have seen Acquia subscriptions, they have their login done really nice. You can kind of say, I want to watch PHP log, varnish log, and it keeps streaming you. They also uh, created a log stream gem, which is publicly available. If you just search for log stream gem, you can see that it's like in the gem repository. I don't understand Ruby, but I took the gem, wrapped it in the Docker container, uh, and then I start the Docker container, and you can see what it does. It just runs the log stream jam uh, towards my Acquia subscription and saves it to a file. And then again, I just say log stash now read it from this file. So I'm actually getting uh, three, a lot of close to real time data from Acquia into my log stash. <clears throat> I talked to Pantheon and <clears throat> Platform Message this morning. They apparently have uh, some way of exposing their logs remotely uh, in the roadmap. They said you can SSH to the server and get it or rsync it, but uh, there is no way how to stream it at the moment. <clears throat> but something they know about and working on. <clears throat> so the last thing, last two minutes, let's see whether we have got anything of your clicks. At the showcase. So, so you can say, look for everything which is request page. <clears throat> for the last 15 minutes, looking for everything which is Salt Puppet and Civil Chef in Franco. So there are some. Uh, and look at the request page. And can you see what's happening here? Like uh, this line is full, uh, fully qualified a URL, and this is just the path. Like just the path, just the URL. What happened here? Like so. But let, let, let me show you log, uh, log type. So this is varnish, Apache, varnish, Apache, ah. So that means that, you know, like I haven't, what's the right word, not normalized, but I didn't process the log file in the same way. So what, what's, what's request page in varnish, it actually comes in the log message as a full URL, while from Apache log I have only the path and it's up to me to do the processing if I want to store it in the same field I didn't here. But haha, uh, knowing that everything which hit Apache must have gone through Varnish, I can say and uh, log type is Varnish. And the last thing, I will create a graph out of this. I think I have a typo here. And so, last visualization, visualize, yes, infracode, ansible, 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 ansible. I haven't set up any script which would do this. And so let's visualize that. 
Uh, so I will create a little pie chart from a saved search. And the term is request. Do you guys remember? Uh, term and the field was, I think, request page. New server string request page. Yep. Bang. Ansible, 71%. Salt, 15. Infrastructure as a code, 11. So I think Ansible has won. Thank you very much. Uh, so wrapping up, I show you how to run the Elk stack locally, running three Docker commands. Please don't do try. Come to me. I will be happy to help if you need to help. I will also uh, write a little blog post follow up on this. We process an Apache log file, store it. I hope it was easy. We examine it, we visualized it, and we looked at a little central logging solution, which I put together ad hoc, but I wanted to show you that I can get data from four different locations, three different server types, and still have all of there. There are some links. There is a very good book on Logstash from James Turnbull. Um, there is the URL of the blog post I'm going to write. Docker, every time you run Docker run Logstash, it actually runs the official image. So these are the project pages of the Logstash Elasticsearch and Kibana Docker images. You don't need to know it when you run Docker run Kibana. It does download it for you, but it's just good to know what it's doing. Any question, please come and ask me. Maybe we have time. And please, before you leave, do rate my, if you, if you liked my presentation, please do <laughs> rate my, my talk. I will be very grateful. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> guys, I have some stickers uh, being at the meetup. I have Beats, uh, Logstash, uh, Kibana. If you like this stuff, I just brought it. That's not my cup of tea, but please, please have it if you like. Any question? I'm here.